we're going to begin with demonstrating how to configure the Cisco MediaSense server to integrate with the Unified Communication Manager. We're going to take a look at the lab components that we're going to be using. We'll introduce you to all of the different devices that we've got. After that, we'll walk you through the step-by-step -step configuration of preparing MediaSense server to integrate with the Unified Communication Manager. Here are the components that we're going to be using throughout our demonstration in this module. We've got our Cisco Unified Communication Manager cluster, also known as CUCM. It has two endpoints registered to it. Both of these endpoints are going to use SIP. We've got a 9971 phone that has the 2001 extension that belongs to Joe. And we've got a Jabber client, 2002, that belongs to Andre. In addition to these endpoints in our Unified Communication Manager cluster, we've got some servers. We've got both Unity Connection and MediaSense. Unity Connection is going to store our voicemail, and MediaSense is going to store media files. In this case, video greetings. We're going to be able to create video greetings so that when users leave us voicemail, they'll see our video greeting. Hi, I'm not able to take your call right now. Well, instead of just hearing that, they'll see our face. So in today's collaboration deployments that have endpoints that support video, the ability to leave video greetings is a pretty neat feature. We're going to show you how to set that up. Before we sign into the Cisco MediaSense administration page and begin our configuration, we wanted to take some time and show you around. The MediaSense server is just like most of the other Cisco collaboration servers. It has a navigation drop-down bar, and we can go to a variety of different interfaces. And each of these interfaces serve a different purpose. So let's take a look at some of them before we begin our configuration. We'll start by going to Cisco MediaSense Serviceability, click Go, and then we're going to have to sign in. And oh, by the way, in order to navigate to the MediaSense server, we just need to put in the IP address into the address bar, HTTPS, the IP address of the server, and here we are. So we're going to log in to the serviceability page for MediaSense, and we can see that we've got the ability to set traces depending on which service we want to trace. We can configure performance logging. We can go into tools, and we've got the ability to configure network services and feature services. We could also download RTMT real-time monitoring tool. It allows us to interact with and gather real-time information from our Cisco server. And if we have a cluster of MediaSense servers, we'd be able to access them into the MediaSense cluster access page. We don't have a cluster. We only have a single MediaSense server. So we're going to move on to Cisco Unified Serviceability. And this is going to look familiar. This is the same serviceability type page that's found in all Cisco collaboration servers. It has the alarm, the trace, tools, service activation. We can see we've got a few services that can be activated under the serviceability page. We can also run serviceability reports if we've enabled the Cisco serviceability reporter service. And we can also configure audits. Let's go back to the navigation and we'll go into the OS administration page. And like all Cisco collaboration servers, the administration page deals with the Linux operating system. And that's going to require a different login because we have two accounts, one for the program that we're configuring and one for the operating system. MediaSense is no exception, so we'll sign in. And as we can see, this looks very familiar as well. It has the same options, the same features as any other Cisco collaboration server. We've got the ability to set security, we could go to settings and look at our IP addresses, our network time protocol server IP addresses. We've got access to TFTP, and we can also install and upgrade our MediaSense server. So it has the same bells and whistles as other Cisco collaboration servers. Now let's go back to the MediaSense administration page, and we'll begin our configuration. Once we sign in, we can see that we've got a few options, administration and system. And if we need help, we could also click the Help tab. And we can see that we've got an AXL service provider, 10.1.5.15. This is Unified Communication Manager. We've added the CUCM server to MediaSense, and it shows up here as a selected AXL service provider. We're going to show you how to activate the AXL service on Unified Communication Manager so you'll understand how we got here. The username and password, this is also from Unified Communication Manager. This is a username and password that has privileges to use the AXL service. 
MediaSense needs to interact with the AXL portion of Unified Communication Manager because that's the service that controls the database, the users. We can see that we've got a call control service provider, and that's going to be Unified Communication Manager as well. We'll add it to Selected and click Save. So we're going to go into the Unified CM configuration to tell MediaSense where to go to find CUCM and what username and password to use once you get there. Now let's take a quick peek at the Unified Communication Manager server so that you can see where this AXL service came from. Here in our Unified Communication Manager server, we're going to go to Navigation and we're going to choose Unified Serviceability. Click Go. And this is where we're going to go to activate services. And we had a similar option on our MediaSense server as we do here on Unified Communication Manager. In order to activate the AXL service, we're going to go to Tools, Service Activation, and then we would choose our publisher, which is the only server that we have in our cluster, so it's the only one that is available to us. And we would scroll down and then select the Cisco AXL web service. We've got that configured, we have it activated, and that's why MediaSense was able to find this server, and we could add the username and password, which allows us to interact with Unified Communication Manager. Now we're going to go back to MediaSense and configure it to work with Unity Connection to host video greetings.